All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a lot to cover in this lesson. Um, our goal here, now that we have a little bit of understanding of just basic trigonometry, our goal here is to build up all of the knowledge that you need to understand this guy. And this is the unit circle, so maybe you've seen this before, maybe not at this point in your career. But notice what this is, is it's really just like a reference for trigonometric relationships. So we see common angles along the inside here in red. And then we see these values out here, which are actually the sines and cosines of all of these angles. And then finally, notice we have these measures in green involving pi. These are actually just a different way of writing down the angles. So these are radians, um, and we need to understand the relationship between radians and degrees, and then how we got all these numbers. So that's a lot. The thing to keep in mind is this is just a reference, just like this is a reference. So you at some point in your life, did not really understand how 11 times 9 works, but you had this, this chart to look up these facts before you came, became really fluent with them. And that is also what this is, just the relationship is much more abstract. So let's start with just the basics here. So we're asked to find sine of A and sine of B, and we're told that these triangles are isosceles, and what that means is this side is also 10 and this side is also 4. So we have two sides are the same and you can write that down if you want. That's a good vocab to know. So notice I'm going to need for sine of A, I'm going to need the opposite and the hypotenuse. So I have to figure out what X is. So I know that 10 squared plus 10 squared would equal X squared. And I'm going to get 100 plus 100 is 200. Square root of 200 is x, so I took the square root of both sides, and then I'm going to simplify that. And you can do that by factoring. You guys are pretty good at this at this point, so I'm just going to give you that that gives me 10 times the square root of 2 is the simplified version. And that's going to be easier for me to work with here. Okay, so that side is 10 root 2. And then sine of a is going to be my opposite over my hypotenuse. And notice what happens here. 10 over 10 cancels out, and I get 1 over the square root 2. Okay, and we're just going to leave it like that for now, although notice I could rationalize. Similarly here, to do sine of b, I need, again, my opposite and my hypotenuse. So maybe you'll see the pattern here already, but I'd have to do 4 squared plus 4 squared equals x squared and then 16 and 16 is 32, and then when I simplify, I get 4 root 2. So that's my hypotenuse, and notice again, I need my hypotenuse and my opposite, so it would be 4 over 4 square root 2. And notice these are the same, right? So this also reduces to 1 over square root 2, or I could rationalize and say that's root 2 times 1, right, over 2, okay? So notice here, I get the same result for both of these. And that's because it's really the same triangle, just scaled up or scaled down. My simplest version of this triangle that I could make would be if my two sides were 1, right? So I'd have 1 and 1. And look at the pattern here. So I have 10 square root 2, 4 square root 2. So I just have... 1 square root 2. And we label this by its angles. So notice we have 45, 45, and 90. So it's a known triangle, so I can scale it up or scale it down, but the relationship between the sides is always the same. Here, cosine of 30 and tangent of 60, well notice we have the same triangles again. So cosine of 30, we can use either triangle here. right? So cosine of 30 would be Adjacent over hypotenuse would be 10 square root 3 over 20, or would be, let's see, 7 over 2 square root 3 over 7. And either way, these reduce to the same thing, right? Would be square root 3 over 2 and square root 3. This one's a little bit harder to see, but square root 3 over 2. Okay, so those are the same results. And if I do tangent, 
I'll leave that one to do on your own, but tangent of 60 would be the same for both triangles as well. So my special triangle here, well, imagine dividing this guy, this special triangle, by 10. I would have 1, square root 3, and 2. And here it's important that we label the angles. The angles are 30, 60, and 90. The 30, 60, 90 triangle. And notice it doesn't matter the size of the triangle. I always get the same results here. So that's why it's important to know these, is these are known quantities that we can use to have known angles. For example, we just figured out that sine of 45 degrees will always be square root 2 over 2. We just figured out that cosine of 30 degrees will always be square root 3 over 2. Similarly, tangent opposite over adjacent of a 45 degree angle, well, this over this is just one, always. So again, we're building towards a reference here. And to build towards that reference, I'm gonna have you pause the video and fill out the table on your own, and I'll give you the solutions here in a second. Okay, so here are my solutions. And notice I rationalized everywhere I could, and notice some of these values repeat. And that makes sense, right? Because we know, for example, sine of 30 should be the same as cosine of 60. So this is the first part of our reference that's going to build towards that unit circle. All right, so a couple more things to cover here. The first is just solving a triangle using our special triangles relationship. So I'm going to label just like I did on the previous page, sort of like we label sine, cosine, tangent. So A is the side opposite 30, 2A is the hypotenuse, root 3A is the side opposite 60, right? And then I'm just going to make equations, right? So I have two equals a square root 3. a then would be, if I divide by square root of 3 on both sides, 2 over the square root of 3. And then I'm trying to find x, so x is equal to 2a. And I'm just plugging in my a, right? So x would be 2 times 2 square root 3, which would be 4 over the square root 3. And then I rationalize. So that's my solution there. So notice if I label these, the reason we use A is X is almost often included in the problem. If I label these, I can use them to make equations just using this relationship here. Now, the last thing that we want to do here is figure out where all these numbers like pi over 3 comes from. So notice pi over 3 is equivalent to 60 degrees. And we want to eventually fill out this chart where I include pi over 6 pi over 4, and pi over 3. Because notice these are my special angles that show up in this guy. So we didn't need to know the relationship between degrees, which is a whole circle is 360 degrees, think Tony Hawk, and radians. And a whole circle in radians is 2 pi. So these are equivalent, right? So what that means is I can set up a proportion. I can be like 330 over 360 equals x over 2 pi. And then I can cross multiply and I'll get 330 times 2 pi equals 360x. Divide both sides by 360 and then simplify and what's left over is 11 over 6. And I just did that fraction on my calculator. Okay, so here's an example of how to convert. We just use a proportion. And what that means is when I take my three special angles, I can convert those values. So by the same math, pi over 6 radians and pi over 3 radians. Okay. So again, just relationships that we're using to build towards that unit circle. The last thing we're going to do is fill out this table. So this should be the exact same table as this. So for example, my first one here, if this is 30 degrees, it would be 1 over 2. Okay. So we're going to need references for both. So essentially what you're doing here, and I'll leave this to you, is you're copying this table 